excited to see my little sister, Haley. Uh, we spoke with her in season one. She has like this little carved out piece in my heart. A lot of people don't see this other side of her. I'm just happy that we have an opportunity to be able to create a safe space for her to talk about where she's at today and, and what she's learned thus far as being a wife. It's like a continuation conversation. What is one thing that you have to have in your purse? A lip balm. Okay. I hate dry lips. That's my pet peeve, dry lips. Describe this past year in one word. Challenging. Where are you today, one word? Content. Hmm. And I think content as a state of being can be very misunderstood. Content is the best place to be. Hmm. When I am in bed at 9 p.m. with my dog and my husband, I am so content and happy and fulfilled because being content, I think, means being fulfilled. Yeah, agreed. What do you believe the antidote to shame is? I think the antidote to shame is being able to talk about it. Hmm. I think what we're doing right here, having a conversation about it, opening up a conversation about it, I think it's talking about what shame is and what shame isn't. Mm -hmm. Shame is going to come in life, but it is not going to control your life. And it is not going to rule your life. I've got to stop you there. It does rule and control some of our lives, doesn't it? But it doesn't have to. Right. Is what I mean. Yeah. Shame is going to come, but it doesn't have to mm -hmm. rule your life. Mm -hmm. And shame is going to make us feel like we're not enough and we're less than and we don't deserve something, but it doesn't have to. When I realized this is totally not what God wants for me and for my life and his promises for me are the opposite of what I'm feeling mm -hmm. is when I had such a big realization that I do not have to walk through life with this holding on to me and it, it changed everything for me honestly like I feel like I have grown the most I ever have in my life in this last year because at the end of the day I kept having to go to Jesus he was the only answer through all the hurt I was going through all the pain I was going through all the shame all the confusion why I, did it come to a head this past year all the shame all the confusion do you think it came up because you were married I think it's because I married the right person Mm. I think when you marry the right person, mm. they're like a reflection. And when you marry the right person, they, in love and gently, are going to call those things out. They're going to keep tell you like it tell is. Tell you like it is. Yes. And I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful that I married someone who would look at me and say, I love you, but... That ain't it. That like, ain't it. <laughs> and, that, and I think a lot of times we don't realize that when, when shame and guilt, or for me, I can speak personally, like when I, you know, I got married to Brian and I'm feeling that shame and that guilt, it, over, it overtaked me. It overtook me because yeah. I felt like Same with me. I was like, oh my God, I, I was comparing myself. I, I yeah. didn't feel like I was being this wife that, you know, maybe he needed me to be yeah. because of the past. Right. I've always dreamt of having a family and being married and being happy. And then I stepped into the start of that and was like, wait a second, I don't know if I can be that because I'm so consumed by Mm. my life before this. And I'm so consumed by the decisions I made in my past. Mm. And... Luckily, I just, I have a great partner who walked me through it and helped me. And, you know, he's had his own journey with shame and his mm -hmm. own struggle. And luckily, we were able to talk about it and work through it together. What's your story? What's my story? Why do you feel this way? Why do I feel this way? How can we move past it together? How can we work through this together? How can we support each other in letting go of our shame. That's the key right there. I believe in order to be healed from your shame, you have to reveal it. Yeah. We have to confront the past. We have to be transparent 100%. and talk about it. 100%. And that, I think, also is a good topic in terms of, because, you know, you and I are both married and we're talking a lot about, like, in our marriage, in our marriage, in our marriage. But there's so many people who are single yeah. and who are tormented with feeling guilty and tormented with feeling shame and all different kinds of feelings. And that is where I would get into the conversation of community is so important 
yeah. to it's it's our lifeline essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Bible is so clear about what community should be for us and I was really lucky I had those people before I was married yeah. to go to, you being the one, like one of the mm-hmm. best people in my life who I could come to and say, here's what's going on. I know you didn't judge me. That's what I think is important for single men and women or even if you're in your in your dating life, where, wherever you're at in life, to have that community of people or those few solid people who are going to tell you that ain't it. That ain't it. And help you work through it yeah. before, ho- hopefully before you reach being married. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I think being married brings things to the surface that you didn't know were there. That's good too. I think your life purpose changes as in different phases of your life. So... Currently, I think that my purpose is to be in this place, yes, and to do this. And I think that the bigger purpose behind it is for me to be a light in this place. Lastly, in season one, you told me that you felt like your purpose was ever evolving, that it changes in different seasons. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like your purpose is today? It's so funny because I remember where I was when we filmed your first season where I was internally, where I was as a person. I was single, I was just doing my thing. And um, my vision was not as clear for what I wanted in life as it is now. Mm -hmm. I think stepping into this new season of life with a partner, I think that my purpose right now is to shed some light on this, to shed light on these conversations, to bring awareness to um, to these kind of sticky subjects and maybe the like... Why do you think they're so sticky? I think they're sticky because we don't want to talk about them. Mm-hmm. What I think is so cool about this new generation in our culture is that I do feel like maybe the culture before us, maybe our parents, was a generation where they didn't talk about a lot to be honest. There was a lot of things that were crass and that weren't appropriate. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't talk about those things. And, you know, we keep it very hush-hush. What I think is cool about our generation is that we're trying to scream it from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. Like, this is real. I feel this way. Let's talk about it. And I want to be a part of that shift. And I want to be a part of that movement, Mm -hmm. shedding light to the darkness. And I think that that's happening in so many different parts of this culture. Mm -hmm. I think that there is new conversations happening in every aspect Mm -hmm. of life right now. And I just feel like my purpose is to use my voice for that. Use my voice to tell people about the freedom of Jesus, about the love of Jesus, about mine and my husband's story. I think we have such an enormous story and I'm just, I want that to keep unfolding and I want us to use our hurt and our shame and our guilt and all the ugly stuff that we both went through together and separately to to help other people. She went there. It was just, it was a moment. Um, but yeah, she's she's grown tremendously and like quick. It was just like, oof, this is, this is powerful. Especially coming from someone that people look at as, you know, they just have everything all together and their life is perfect. And for her to say that the scrutiny is more massive and more painful now than it was a year ago. It's like, man, that's that sucks. But today was was special because she hasn't done that. And she's been waiting to do that. And so I was happy and grateful that we were able to give her space to do what she just did. I'm so excited to be speaking with Katherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. She's an author speaking on forgiveness. I totally understand that feeling of looking at something that happened in your life and saying, I don't want to forgive. We feel like if we're forgiving somebody, we're sacrificing something. And that's very, of course, what a lot of people think. I definitely had moments where I was tested with my past Mm -hmm. and something that I 
thought that I had practiced forgiveness. And then it um, comes, comes back, back up. up and they're yeah. like, <laughs> no, you actually really didn't. You actually yeah. have not really confronted that. Yeah. People think they want fame. They don't understand that you can literally lose yourself in fame. Everyone in LA like, is either an actor or a musician. Like. It's always about like how many likes you get, who saw your picture. It's a photograph, it's hair and makeup, it's a team of people, it's lighting, it's fabricated. You let that stuff define who you are. Get ready for the worst times of your life. I mean, I have a lot of people that are, that are dear friends of mine that get to the top that, you know, want to blow their brains out. Everything is being flipped on its head. The winner is Destiny's Child. Number one record after number one record. It was three countries in one day. Money wasn't enough. Cars wasn't enough. You just felt alone, even though you had the cars, the money. Totally. Yeah, I think they're living the dream life. Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Being on the cover of Vogue. It's just an industry of selling your soul. We're all climbing a mountain, hoping that the contentment lies somewhere at the very top. I was in a really dark spot. It just felt like for a second I, I was going to drown. 17 years in the deadliest prison in America, passing homeless people every day. There's a responsibility here. I just have this theory that if you surround yourself with too many possessions, you can't see. If you don't find your identity, someone will define you. Once you can change your mind about what you think is possible for you, you can change your life. I like clothes, but it's really empty if that's what I came here to do. I mean, I have about maybe like a dollar sixty-eight in my pocket, but I'm probably one of the richest men you'll ever meet. People glorify me because I play basketball. That's no reason to be glorifying anybody. That spirituality and that talent now has come together. Now I have a superstar. We're all human, and we are all on the same journey. Yeah.